thanks to Sandy and the AHC for the opportunity to talk, chat with you today. Uh, my name's Anthony Gray, and I own and operate an RTO in Queensland called MIG Training. So our jo day job is really working with salons to take their apprentices through the formal part of their, their training and bring them out the other side so that they can become great hairdressers in their own right, future salon owners, and to feed the industry that we all love. What I'd love to talk to you today is really about progression of apprentices and the things that we learn from the, the clients that we work with um, about best practice in, in how to progress and nurture your apprentice, as well as ways that you can work with your college in order to improve those outcomes as well. So as a college that works in the formal training space, we're in a really privileged position because we're able to work with many salons and hairdressers who provide you know, incredible education and development opportunities for their staff. So partnering with these salons across the whole breadth of, of industry allows us as a college to see firsthand best practice in salon education in all its forms, really. Um, it, it, in turn, it, it also allows us to work really closely with dedicated trainers and in-salon educators who nurture and develop their teams. And I suppose in particular for us, it's about those emerging stylists and, and the apprentices that we're most passionate about. We all know that the one size fits all approach to education is destined to fail. So those that we work with that have seemingly cracked that code in relation to training and progressing apprentices have many common touchstones. So I'll go through those that we see that are common touchstones across the salons that we work with. In essence, though, it boils down to one thing, that the salons that have great education platforms are the ones that take the creative, fun nature that in essence is a salon, and they combine it with challenge, and they combine it also with a sense of belonging and a sense of team, so that young people or apprentices that come through their businesses not only feel the creative side and feel the fun and enjoy all the things that there are to enjoy in a salon, but they're challenged and they're also challenged to contribute and, and create a sense of belonging. In practice though, what does that look like? So the salons that we deal with, you can really boil it down to four or five key points. Um, and I'll go through those now uh, to give you a bit of a feel for what great in-salon education programs look like. Firstly, and most importantly, there's a really clear and concise plan. Now this includes really clear timeframes and accountabilities for each apprentice. And it's really about skills-based training. So it's a concise plan about um, skills over the duration of the apprenticeship. And the key to making this work, I think for most salons is that they take all the training package talk and the mumbo jumbo and they put it to the side and they develop a really skills-based plan that hits the key areas. So they boil it down to the most important elements, which are cut, color, chemical, you know, style and design work, and then also consultation. Now, those building blocks can be used in a number of different ways and different businesses will, will place them in different areas, but they're, put, they're done in a way that allows the apprentice to slowly work through and feel like a really contributing member of the team. Secondly, the best of breed salons that we work with bridge the gap and partner with a college that will work with them. So to ensure that those building blocks that I talked about actually are mirrored in the college work. And so that there's a, there's a training and assessment plan that sets, that's set by the college that mirrors and works in unison with the in-salon training. So this can break down to everything. So it can talk about the order of the units that they work through, a plan for college training that's delivered, whether that be traditional, once a week, once a fortnight, or a workplace delivery type model, as long as it's a tailored solution that fits the salon. And then also a really clear plan for how assessment is conducted. A third most important point, uh, a third most important point, I should rather say, is that success is demonstrated by those who embrace the journey with the apprentice. So salons that go back to basics with their training um, really uh, provide the best jumping-off point for those apprentices to, to to soar later on. 
I think oftentimes the hardest part for an experienced hairdresser is to really deconstruct what is a complex role being a hairdresser and then really hitting all those fundamentals. Uh, cutting is a classic example of this. So in salon educators that break it down to the basic building blocks, and they can vary from salon to salon, but, but really it's around solid, uniform, graduation, layout, whatever language you use, as long as you break cutting down to those basic building blocks, then that provides a basis for success. And that can be across the board. So providing those solid fundamentals that then are supported by your college are another way where sin salon educators are really um, setting up apprentices for success. Fourthly, great in salon educators challenge and excite the apprentice to develop strong practical skills that contribute to the team. Um, the statistics around apprenticeships really hit you in the face. There's, there's probably only 30% apprenticeships are completed. And half of those, those apprenticeships that are completed the cancellation is usually within that first 12 months. So the best salon educators have moved way past the old school notion of doing your time. So they create plans that challenge the apprentice to be constantly building on those fundamental skill blocks and contributing to the team's performance. That's what keeps them engaged. That's what stops them from, from cancelling for the most part. And finally, successful salon educators ask a lot from their colleges in relation to communication and feedback. So making sure that what they do in salon is backed up at college is critical. So they invest time in, in partnering um, and working on partnerships um, to ensure that there's alignment between the formal training and the in-salon training. And you know, really for the most part, holding the college to account at every step of the way. I suppose from our perspective, we really we really talk to a lot of hairdressers who are really proud of how they were trained and talk with reverence in relation to their own salon educators and mentors. So the salons that succeed in training and education of the next generation quite simply see their apprentices as their, their industry calling card um, and their ongoing legacy. The examples of best practice that we've observed over time help to highlight also, some of the misconceptions that salon owners can have when working with colleges to train apprentices. So namely that there's no flexibility in how you, the training and assessments delivered. In fact, training that's tailored and suits the needs of your salon is available to all, really. I'm, I know different states have different regulations and um, different structures, but all state funding at this point is based around uh, user having choice. So salons are able to move, find someone that's a good fit um, and develop relationships that work in line with their in-salon models. So there is choice out there. And there is also um, choice in from the viewpoint of saying to your college, no, that's not how I want the training to be delivered. Strong partnerships also open up lines of communication and allows you to share the journey together. Um, for us, the, our best relationships are where we become a partner and we help connect salons to all the support that's available across the broader industry. I think in particular, that's why the Australian Hairdressing Council is so powerful. Um, we've been through a process and many others have as well called RTO Select, where we're asked to demonstrate an underlying commitment to being current and also to have a great deal of engagement with industry across all sectors. So then being able to connect our salons and having strong partnerships where that's happening backwards and forward can only be good for the formal education platform. Importantly, I suppose, what us as a college want salons to know is that the key to sustainable future for us as a college and then also salons alike is a commitment to growing the next generation um, of hairdressers. Um, employing apprentices can be hard work. Quality people are really hard to find. Um, and even more difficult to keep. So I know every employer has a horror story about being burned in the process of employing new people to industry. But I suppose colleges like myself want salons to know that the investment's worth it. Um, there's an incredible satisfaction and success that can be achieved through strong partnerships between college and, and, and salon. And also too in seeing new stylists emerge that then go on to, to um, much better and greater things.
partnership is key. Those key touchstones that we spoke about um, earlier are also important to setting up great models of in-cell on education. Um, and I hope that some of those insights have been really helpful. Thanks again for the opportunity to chat with you uh, and wish everyone, all AHC members and non-AHC members, all the best. Thanks very much. Bye.